Do you make your family call you sir? <laughs> well, a fat chance I have of that. <laughs> Never met nah, a sir before. No. Nah. Well, there's nothing very special about a sir. You know, it's a bit silly, really. It's a sort of anachronism, really. It uh, doesn't get you a good table in a restaurant. <laughs> but uh, that's about all. I mean, I think, I think that, that, that honours exist to, uh, say, uh, pay tribute to somebody in their particular form of work. But titles, really, are a bit silly, I think. I have to talk to you as an actor and as a great director because... Mm -hmm. You're really known in both circles. What was the first part you ever played? Uh, I think it was in a, a Gilbert and Sullivan opera where I sang in the chorus. I was a fairy in Ireland, mm -hmm. I think, age nine, I believe. I think. It's, you're right. Am I? Oh, I am. I, I don't. <laughs> you have it checked up. Yes. Yeah. So you were a fairy. That was the first thing That's you ever right. did, right? Yeah. And then you went on and got the bug. Yeah. And well, you I had to stay bug. in. And your father didn't really like that too much. No, he didn't. He uh, he was an academic. He was a vice chancellor of a university, and he uh, he thought I was wasting my time. Really, I think that was the point. But equally, you see, he adored drama. I mean, he mm. used to pay a penny. What what was a penny to go up into the gods in the gallery? In a, in a repertory company in Liverpool where he was a schoolmaster. And he loved the theater. But the great thing he did for me, I was 11, and he, took, he told me I was going to see a genius. He said, you'll see a number of geniuses in your life. But here's a genius, he said, in a new medium. Now, this was in 1930, early 1930s. And he took me to see The Gold Rush, mm -hmm. to see Charlie Chaplin. And that did it for me. That's what I, I wanted to try and get into that world. Did he ever live to see that you had no. uh, made a good decision? Oh, bless him, yes. He, uh, he, he, he lived to 80, and um, he saw me doing a number of things, but he, he didn't see some of the direction things that I had. And my mother, sadly, who was really the person who encouraged, encouraged me to go on, was killed in a motor accident when she was my age. She was 62, which was a, the really only great sadness in in my life, I think, in those times. I think the one stroke of genius that I can claim was the choice of my parents. Mm. <laughs> if you were casting Richard Attenborough for a part, what yeah. kind of part would you put him in? Oh, my God. Now? Mm -hmm. Short, fat, bald, gray-haired, uh, jovial, a bastard. <laughs> Attenborough, the actor, has played a lot of British survivors. That seems yeah. to be his main yeah. category. Yeah, that's true. Uh, I suppose that emanates to a certain extent from the war, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, we started, I started making movies in the war, in the middle of the war, and we were involved in, in, in a fight for existence to a certain extent, and so survival became a well, I mean, that's, it was every day. Were you going to survive? And you, you shot pictures in planes over Germany? Uh, I did. I, I was a, what's called an air gunner cameraman. We used to go in and, uh, where there were guns, where there were normal browning guns under normal circumstances, we had cameras, 100-foot IMOs. And we used to go in and photograph the target and then go up top and, and orbit round while the bombers came in mm -hmm. and uh, bombed the factory or whatever it was. And then we would come down and photograph the damage. and. There was a scene like that in uh, A Bridge Too Far that you did. It was indeed. With a little kid on the bicycle. It was indeed. It was indeed. Some quick thoughts on uh, a few things and people you've been involved with. The Great Escape. Yeah. You were an actor in that, a yeah. mastermind of the plot. Right. Any fond memories? or? Oh, yes, very fond memories. Uh, it's the first time I acted in a major international movie, and I made a number of friends at that time, uh, particularly, sadly, um, Steve McQueen, who I made two pictures with, and another picture called The Sand Pebbles. And uh, I miss him very much. He, uh, we lived together practically for uh, 18 months or so, you know, and uh, I think he was uh, a remarkable figure. I think if Steve had lived, he would have found himself in his own generation in the same category as Tracy or somebody. I think he was that good. But he was a very troubled man. Yes, hugely, all his life, all his life. Uh, uneasy, uh, lacking in confidence sometimes, which of course uh, materialized and in, in, came to the surface in, in, a, in, a, in a brashness in terms of uh, he wouldn't have this and he would have that. But they were all for the right reasons. 
he was a very kind man, he was a thoughtful man, and he was a close friend of mine. I miss him very much. Even now I miss him. I often think, God, I wish Steve was around. Throughout your life, uh, the word Gandhi comes up very early, and, and you finally got to make your picture, and it all ended up, I believe, perfectly. I'm sure you'd probably change a few things, but it ended up about as well as a film could end up in critical acclaim and financial acclaim and that. Is that correct? Or you never really complete a vision? Well, you never do, do you? I mean, you never do. And I, each time you see it and you regret certain things, and I, I do have a major regret with Gandhi. I, Gandhi was a, was a colossus. Gandhi was a, a genius. Gandhi was a very, very, very great man. But so were many of the people around him. Nehru and Patel and... Uh, they were remarkable men as well. And I think my sadness, really, when I see Gandhi again, and I've seen it several times since I made it, is that I never really achieved that level of caliber of companion for him. They were just inevitably, by virtue of the length of the movie and so on, they became a bit cardboard characters. And I, I regret that in a way because the more I knew about them and the more I know about them more now, I mean, the more I admire them. And so the latest chapter in the Attenborough book is a dance film, and that is, uh, again, very unique to anything else you've ever done. Yes, it is. Um, I adore music. I absolutely love music. The most important thing in my life is music. I, I hang on to music right to the end. But I, I did it for, for uh, reasons in addition to that. Somebody said to me, when you're 102, if all you've done are big, epic, uh, moralistic, biographical pictures and you suddenly want to do James Bond, nobody will let you. Why don't you switch now? Why don't you do something? And since the first movie I directed was a picture called Oh, What a Lovely War, which was a musical, mm -hmm. I was tempted to do Chorus Line, and I'm very thrilled, really very thrilled I did. I, I've learned a lot from making a Chorus Line. Thank you. Thank you. My best interviews are always with directors. I don't know why. Blake, this film